Hey guys, what's up? This is Shirt Talking. Welcome back to my channel. Today, video is about the second day of the Conquest mode or Final Fantasy Legends event. We unlocked a lot of new nodes, and what does that change? Well, not much. Sadly, all the small nodes are still a mess, and you can find different types of enemies like uh, I discussed it in the first video, so if you're still farming for AoE damage, you should just use the most number of elements you can with the strategies that I discussed it before, like using, um, let me get here, group 5, squads with elemental damage. I've been training this one as an example, using even creators now that I have, in, and also training a little of my Buni alongside elemental damage and the uh, diversity here. But then um, there is one thing, the middle node is also a mess, still we have this one that was very bad for instant killing, you could have some nuke strategy here but still a lot of HP, and this one was a little better since you had less enemies resistant to instant kill, and now that we have the second part we have two new nodes, uh, there is this node here, well this one is a little better than the one that we can find here on the bottom. But still, I don't think that any of them are good enough. No, they are not. If you follow for instant kill strategies, you shall bring someone that can also do damage when it fails, because you'll be failing a lot. There's almost half of the enemies still being uh, immune to instant killing. I still use uh, one of these strategies here, let me show. Um, and I don't get good results. Many of them are just resistant. So, what changes here is that you can farm now another boss here. This larger node, we have a dragon, and this dragon here is actually very easy to defeat because we can bring a lot of free units to defeat it without, well, spending too much time. Let me explain something here. Uh, CDU is only weak against Slash, resistant against all other status elements and also Lightning and Pierce. So uh, it's easy to find Slash in this game, it really is. We can bring something like this strategy here, this is Probably the one that I'm using the most, but I do have others that you can bring more trainees. Actually, uh, Mirza here is a trainee, although the other four characters are not. Uh, Sith is here because she has a very good opener. This is the last Platinum Sith that has Mountain Cross. Remember, Mountain Cross buffs both STR and Dexterity. If you have the skill max, that buff is better. I'm still ranking this up, that's why I'm using her here. She helps out with both STR and Dex, meaning that. Grey gets powerful, and also Rofus. Rofus is the king of the damage in the game right now, and it will be for a long time, and his gun and blade has a 4S slash for the second hit. That is why he's here. That is like 70,000 damage with this gun and blade, just for the slash part. It's insane. And then I have the newest version of Beauty that can open with a very strong attack. I'm training my Tempest Orb right now. Tempest Orb is something that you can get from her S style, and it's actually uh, almost the same damage as Gale Darts, but it can be a little better, but the cost is way higher, but I don't know, maybe in some stages where there's only one wave, you want this skill training, so that's the reason why I only awoken it once, and I'm training this, when I finish I will just train my Gale Darts and try to get my building trained here right now. Uh, if I don't want to use this, I can go to Gale Darts, increase wind Q, and she would just keep using Gale Darts. The damage is very, very similar. Just wind Q that doesn't have that much power against a single target. And then, well, Grey. Let's talk about Grey. This Grey is the second Grey. Let me check here. No, no, this is the first one. I'll talk about the second one in a few. This is the one that has Yaksha Flash. This attack here is very powerful because it can hit between 3 to 5 hits and there's a critical damage against flowing. Well, dragons fly and that's why it's so strong here. And even if it only hits 3 times, it's already very powerful nuke, like triple S damage, even higher than some other characters that do triple S easily. So that's why Grey is so important here. He's a Platinum style, most people will have him unless you, you didn't got lucky with your Platinum boost. So Yaksha Flash is something very good. My Grey is level 33 only and he's doing very high damage, because it even hits for critical. So one of the best characters to use here after Rofus is Grey, Stantley Grey. Uh, this is the first Grey, so he gets Yaksha Flash easily, but then there is another one. I mean, this is actually the second Grey. There is the Launch Grey, this is the second Grey, there is also a third Grey that we got. And that one is a little better, but we talk about him in a few. So Mirza is here for training, just bring anyone that can do Slash Damage, just to contribute a little, and you see that you can clear this in a single turn sometimes. Let's go. Okay, so here is the Dragon. Because Sif Attack is... Uh, fast, she will buff everyone before anyone gives an action. That is incredible. Mountain Cross, 
buffs to everyone. But in this case, we got a combo. We don't need a combo to kill this. Look, Tempest Orb is not max, it's level 5 only, so has a lot of room to improve. Look, we are very close to the cap, just with this attack. Time for Grey to see some action, and Yaksha Flash does not get too strong by leveling up, but it does get a little better within time. Uh, see, at least 3 hits will give us 45,000 damage with a 33 level Grey. That's insane. But let me show a variation of this strategy too. Okay, so this is the variation, this is when I start using a different version of Grey. This is the, the third Grey that has the Sweeping Slash Attack, Bone Breaker, Merciless Yaksha. So I inherit Yaksha Flash here. Why this one is better? That is because you can just use Bone Breaker on turn 2. And uh, also this one is the best Grey for a long time. I think this one should be the one that should be using and investing to increase the level up instead of the first. There's a future Grey that is also pretty good. I think though this one in the future one is the best one. So if you invest too much in the first one, still good enough, but then it's not good for bosses, while this one is still is good for bosses. So the best great. And uh, after Yaksha Flash, if you need a next turn, he will use Bone Breaker. The other Grey does have another skill, but it's Smash and it has the same power, but a higher cost. Even Awaken that is a waste. That's why I'm using this one. So um after Grey. This time I'm using a different thing with Beauty, and that's just Gale Darts, like I said, you can use Gale Darts, especially if you're going for two turns nuke, you use Gale Darts now and then uh, keep leveling this up to you get the max damage. Uh, Rufus is still here, and there is one very interesting character, and that is Boston. Boston is a character that you can use in agility position, and has Slash, yeah. The other character that also has Slash is Human Female, but we don't have her, we are using Boston instead. So he opens with this pincer, it's not strong, but at least it's also a slash, and then on the next turn he uses Rampaging Scissors before the enemy attack because his agility is insane. So uh, you have a slot for a trainee. You don't need a uh, Boston here, you can use other character, but it's just that Boston works pretty really fine and I'm training him. And he's probably getting a new style pretty pretty soon. So that is the formation, you can bring one trainee or two depending on who you replace Boston. So the thing is very similar here, it's just that Boston will go first. You see, 16,000 damage is not bad. Boston is something that everyone has access to. The only one that some people may not have access to now is Rofus. Look, he actually 3 hits only. Still very good damage. And usually uh, I get my... Boston to kill the boss, but I think my weapon has a full HP stun, so the effect will be removed. Still, it's so easy to kill it, it does not kill with Boston, anyone else will. And that is uh, something that you can do with three styles and bring two trainees if you want. Now the last strategy is stack as much slash damage dealers as you can. Yes, that works. I still believe that the newest version of Sif is one of the best things if you have her since she will increase the damage of everyone and I'm still training her, so very nice to have Mountain Cross here. And then we have uh, Grey, the second one, like I said he can use Bone Breaker after that. And then we have Jen. well Jen is pretty strong even now. But actually Jen was outclassed by someone that I am also using and that one is Hulk. I just get Gen here because he's very leveled up, his skill is maxed, in Hulk case it's not. So sorry in Judgment is being leveled up here, and that is the case. Uh, I also have the newest version of Albert, he does have Raleigh Rift, he's a single target attack that has very good power as well. Not maxed, that's why I'm leveling him up. You can just stack all your other slash attackers, there are many, there are UDX Gustav you have, there's UDX Madeline, there is also UDX Gustav. <laughs> There are many slash damage dealers, also Summer Ellen also works pretty fine in this formation, just bring your best damage dealers in Dragon Strike and it will work. Let's go. Then here comes the dragon again. I think Albert's one of my fastest one. Well, see if we go first because she has a buff. And slash and fast. Nice. Exactly as I thought. Sif goes first, then Albert, then Grey. Then Hulk. Only three hits. You need an extra turn. But it's usually okay. 
Even when using normal attacks. Yeah, so you can train all your slash units without many restrictions as long as you use Dragon Strike. And that's it guys, I think this is it. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, there are links here in the description of the video. We we'll see each other on the next one. Bye.